So you want to play Huntress, huh? Well, either that or you misclick the video. But hey, you're here now, so you might as well stick around. Because I'm going to get you learned. The goal of this guide isn't to just give you a build. Say, throw hatchet, hit survivor, ooga booga. And turn you loose into the world like a plague ink virus. No, I'm going to give you some good foundational tips. Things to avoid. A bit... Okay, I guess I'm going to give you a few builds, but shut up and listen, okay? First, we're going to give you a build for your foundational skills, like looping and mind gaming. Then we're going to transition your perks out slowly as you learn into a build to help you learn and memorize survivor behavior habits. After that, you'll be completely graduated from this Intro to Huntress course, and I'll give you some summer homework for the intermediate class later this year. Finally... I, uh, I'll give you guys some builds tailored towards specific play styles. And if you want that, uh, you can look at the timeline below or you can look in the description. There's timestamps for every chapter of this video. Uh, and towards the end, I, I will give you guys some builds that are tailored towards specific play styles like sweaty, casual. If you want a little mix of both, you want to have fun, go for cross maps, but you don't want to just outright lose the game because you have no pressure. All that will be at the end uh, or at least towards the end. And if you want to just skip to that, uh, you can go down to the description and there's a timestamp. But now that we have that covered, drop a like, hit subscribe, and stay hydrated. This is a threat. I was originally debating on putting all of my fundamental tips together at the end of this video, uh, after we go through the two builds and the lessons that you need to learn for those builds. Uh, but I decided that I'd put these here at the beginning, so that if you take nothing else from this video, and you decide I'm a big dumbass who doesn't know what they're talking about, I want you to at least remember these tips. These tips are so fundamental to playing Huntress. Even at 2,000 hours, you will still have to remind yourself of these things mid-match. The first tip is going to be be patient. This tip is so simple, you think it wouldn't need to be said. But legitimately, the most important thing you can remember when trying to hit hatchets is just be patient. Don't be so patient that you hesitate to go for a shot and the survivor rounds the corner and you waste your opportunity. But don't just go around throwing hatchets like a machine gun. Take that extra half a second, quarter of a second to just breathe and aim. Second tip, in some scenarios, don't be afraid to just hold your hatchet up. Holding M2 will put the fear of God into some survivors. The longer you just hold that axe in the air, the more tension you create and you can absolutely just zone survivors off of loops. Like in this example here, you can see me just holding him too, and the survivor is just running left and right. They want to get to this loop, the next tile over. They want access to this pallet, this window. But instead, since I'm holding my M2 in the air, and they're, you know, they don't want to get hit, they're instead just running zigzags, and I'm just slowly closing the gap. And if you do this correctly, you won't even have to worry about loops. The third tip is going to be to aim for the sweet spot. If you just raw dog Huntress and go in there after watching one Coconut RTS video... It'll take you a couple of hundred hours to even realize this, but very often you'll be chasing a survivor and you'll realize that instead of having to predict the dodge or predict if they're not going to dodge, you can instead aim for this sweet spot. Like, uh, look here at this survivor. So you can see, I'm, look at this Venn diagram. They're running up against this wall and I have to make a split second decision. Do I want to throw my hatchet as if they're not going to double back or dodge or swing wide? Or do I predict that they are going to swing wide? or double back and I throw my hatchet for that. Instead, you can see right here in this green area, this is the sweet spot. Because of the distance that I am away from the survivor, I can throw here. And if I throw here, no matter what they choose to do, I'm gonna hit them. They can dodge, they can keep running straight. They're still gonna get hit. Uh, and once you can learn to recognize when you have this sweet spot available to you, it's not available in every scenario, it's usually only when they're up against a wall or if they're in a narrow corridor or if they're going upstairs. It's not going to apply to every scenario. But as soon as you can recognize mid-chase in the heat of the moment, oh, I can I can sweet spot this. That's going to be able to help you a lot. All right. And then for my last tip, uh, this honestly probably should have been the first fundamental tip. But when you are chasing survivors, um, I'm not going to I'm not saying you should be an M2 only huntress. Um, in fact, I'm not even an M2 only Huntress. I respect people that do it, but I will never do it. I think it's crazy. But when you are chasing survivors and you have a really easy hit, like you snuck up on the survivor somehow, or they were hiding in a corner and didn't expect you to find them, go for the M2 always. Do not M1. Uh, when you M2, 
the amount of time it takes for you to go back to neutral, for you to be able to throw another M2 or for you to M1, is a lot less than your basic attack cooldown with your M1. So if you M1 them instead of M2ing them, they'll become injured, they'll get their speed up, they'll run, and they will cover more distance than if you had M2'd them. If you M2 them, you'll be closer to them by the time you can attack again. And if you're running Oakhaft, in some scenarios, you can M2 them and then immediately M1. They don't even get enough distance for it to matter. So that's honestly, it's really important. Always go for M2s first if you can. If you're out of ammo, obviously M1. Um, if you're out of ammo, honestly, you should just be reloading. Don't, don't, don't overcommit to a chase with no ammo. It's really bad. It's going to feel really bad for you to just drop chase the reload, but usually you can get an idea of where they're going and you can just re-pick back up or you can just move on and patrol gins and find a different survivor to chase. You read that right. Your mortal enemy. This is not an exaggeration. If you run into survivors using and abusing these things like a public fleshlight in a boy's locker room, you are going to have a bad time. So let's go over it and then give you the on-paper solution. The short distance medium wall loops on Coldwin. This is a perfect example. The distance the survivor has to run before they make it around this corner is too short for you to hit an M2, but the walls are high enough to make hatchets difficult while still being short enough to prevent mind games. You'll be so tempted to go for the super skillful and flashy play of hitting the very top of the survivor's hitbox over the top of the hay in this loop and you'll hold your hatchet in the air and do a bunch of 180 moonwalk mind games, and none of those are worth it, okay? If you're watching this guide, you are not good enough to hit that hatchet, and you cannot mind game these loops. The survivors can see you over the hay. Now, what should you do here depends on if there is a pallet or if there's no pallet. So let's go over each one. So for the pallet mind game, what I like to do, it doesn't work on every survivor, but what I like to try in the beginning, uh, this will save you a lot of time, is you're going to... Turn left here, you know, just for example, we're going to turn left, moonwalk backwards, and then just swing, just M1 lunge through this pallet. Uh, and a lot of times they're expecting the mind game. They're trying to figure out which way you're going to go. If you just swing through the pallet, most of the time, even if they drop it, you're still going to get the M1 off. If that doesn't work, then what you're going to have to do is you're just going to have to spend about 15 to 30 seconds just holding W and getting the M1. You can try doing the 180s, doing the moonwalks. But I promise you, the higher your MMR gets, the more likely it's going to be that that just isn't going to work. A lot of times the survivors are smart and they know where their safe spots are, where they can wait and they can see whether or not you're going to mind game it or double back. And they know exactly how to play it. So you're just going to have to hold W and get the M1. You'll either, uh, and I wouldn't respect the pallet. Don't respect the pallet at all. Uh, you're either just going to have to eat the pallet and then chase them to the next tile. And hopefully you can zone them off or hit them before they get to the next tile. Or they will not expect you to just M1 through the pallet and you can just eventually you'll get an M1 and then they'll move on to the next tile. Uh, one thing to keep in mind here is which side of the loop that you want to chase them through. Uh, if you have cow shed on one side of the loop and you have a filler tile that is already missing its pallet and it's completely uh, free, you know you'll get your follow up hit there. Uh, try and chase them towards, the, towards that direction. So if you're... For example, if we swing through this pallet here and we hit them, they're, we are in between them and the filler pallet, so they're going to run to cow shed, which is bad. That's a horrible tile for Huntress. So instead, you're just going to want to turn around 180 and chase them the other way. So that way, whether they drop the pallet or you hit them, either way, they're not going to be able to get to cow shed without taking a hit. They're going to have to go to the filler tile, and you're going to have a much easier time. Uh, one thing you also need to be careful is uh, just make sure you don't waste too much time. If you notice that this is taking a long time and you it, you're they're not even injured yet, just drop the just drop the loop, okay? It's not worth it. You're you're gonna save yourself some headaches. I would just move on to the next tile. Uh, go move on. See if you can find the next survivor. Go patrol your gins and just move on. Uh, and this is also becoming more and more common. This is also one of your mortal enemies. Is uh, a lot of times nowadays survivors will not loop a huntress. Uh, because she is an anti-loop killer. Her hatchets make it pretty impossible for survivors to drop pallets or for them to vault windows. And a lot of survivors have recognized this and they just won't loop you. Uh, they're just going to run from tile to tile holding shift W. And they know that it's going to waste way more of your time this way. Uh, don't worry, it's, it's going to be an easy down because they're not looping. Uh, you'll have opportunities to M2 them in between the tiles. Uh, 
but it's going to be super boring and frustrating. Again, don't be afraid to just drop chase and go pressure gens if you want to have fun and you don't want to just in indulge them in their shift W-ness. Also, if you're a survivor and you're watching this, please stop holding shift W versus killers. It's so boring. Please just loop us. That's, we're not asking for a lot here. <laughs> but mainly, yes, killers, don't be the living example of sunk cost fallacy. Uh, just drop the chase. Okay, it's fine. Now let's move on to our first foundational build. All right, for our first foundational build, these are the perks that we're going to be running. We're going to be running Iron Maiden, Hex Blood Favor, Bamboozle, and I'm All Ears. For the add-ons, we're going to be using Babushka and Rose Root. These are both green add-ons. Uh, now, I'm All Ears, Bamboozle, and Hex Blood Favor are good learning tools. Uh, they can act as a, a sort of a crutch for your fundamental skills that are a bit hard to grasp when you're starting out. Uh, because Huntress loops and ch chases so much differently than most of the other killers, these are going to be good tools for you to use when you're first starting out. You don't need to run I'm All Ears and Bamboozle at the same time if you don't want to. You can replace... Uh, I would replace I'm All Ears to begin with. I think Bamboozle is better to start off with. You can replace that with an in-game perk like No Way Out or No Ed or Jin Slowdown. And just use Bamboozle until you feel comfortable and then change out Bamboozle for I'm All Ears. This is because I'm All Ears and Bamboozle both help you tackle the same issue, but in very different ways. I'm All Ears will help you understand how to mind game people and hit hatchets on survivors when they vault a window. Like in this example, the survivor is going to vault the window and they can go left or they can go right and they're going to try and loop you. Uh, you can use this aura reading to learn how to act like you're going one way, make the survivor turn around and run past the window, and then you can hit them with the hatchet. And having I'm All Ears makes this extremely easy. Uh, but Bamboozle, if you're just starting out and you're very, very new, Bamboozle can take the difficulty out of some of those loops. Uh, like Shack and High Wall Jungle Gems, for example. Uh, those are a little bit more tough to mind game, and those windows are very narrow and hard to hit hatchets on. So I like to run Bamboozle and recommend Bamboozle for survivors just starting off. Uh, so you can you can just vault that window, close that window off, and then you don't have to worry about it. It's It's so easy. <laughs> Uh, you can just go for your easy hit and activate your Hex Blood Favor, which is a little more wishy-washy. Uh, but Hex Blood Favor can help in those short loops that we covered in the Mortal Enemy uh, section. You can uh, you can use Hex Blood Favor if you get an early hit to just straight up deny that pallet. So if you hit the survivor on the way to the Mortal Enemy tile, uh, then the pallet's going to be blocked and it makes going through that tile just so much easier. Because you don't have to respect the pallet anymore because it's blocked. Uh, and Iron Maiden is just so you can reload faster. If you don't want to use it, then don't use it. I'll be honest, Iron Maiden is kind of like a crack pipe. It's very addicting. I used it when I was learning and now I can't stop using it. Uh, reloading at normal speed just physically pains me. Um, but you'll see a lot of Huntresses that don't run it. If you don't want to run it, it's not required. It's going to be listed in every single build for today's video. Like I said, just because it's literally crack, I can't stop using it. Uh, but the goal of this build is to eventually learn the behaviors that these perks highlight to the point where you no longer need them and we can transition into the next phase of learning. Let's go over the add-ons though. Babushka and Roseroot. At this stage of your learning, these add-ons make it infinitely easier to hit these sh your short to medium range hatchets uh, that you're just going to be using all the time. These aren't going to help you with cross maps, but when you're in chase and you have the survivors that act like they're playing the game with a fucking steering wheel, right? They're just going left, right, zooming around like a crackhead. Uh, using Rose Root makes it a lot easier. Depending on how close you are, Rose Root honestly makes it like hit scan. Uh, the, the flight speed is so fast that you don't even have to try and predict what they're going to do. You can just aim right at them and throw it. That only works at short distance. At medium distance, you're still going to have to lead the shot a little bit. It's not the be-all, end-all. Um, but unfortunately, Rose Root does make it very hard to hit the cross maps that are like over buildings. You're arcing cross maps. So if you're trying to like throw over Shack, uh, like in this clip, or you're trying to throw over a hill, it's going to be a lot harder. But you can still hit snipes from long distance as long as there's nothing in between you and the survivor. Which is why this build doesn't have any of those aura reading perks like Darkness Revealed, Bitter Murmur, Lethal Pursuer. I'm trying my hardest to make this a one build fits all, but every person's going to have their own strengths and weaknesses when learning fundamental skills. Um, if you 
feel like you don't really need eye mall ears or bamboozle. You have your window shots down, uh, but there's other concepts that you notice you're kind of struggling with. You can run other perks to cover for those weak spots. Or if you feel like you have all the fundamental skills down and the game is just going by too fast, uh, then you can just throw some gin slow down in there. If you just have any questions about what you should run for certain things, you can stop by my Twitch channel and ask when I'm live, or you can just leave a comment. Uh, I usually reply to all my comments. Either one works. Uh, but once you eventually learn every single behavior that these perks are meant to help you learn, we can move on to the next build. Our phase two build. For this build, we're going to be transitioning our perks uh, into something a little more aura reading fo focused. So we're going to keep Iron Maiden, and we're going to run Barbecue, Bitter Murmur, Lethal Pursuer, uh, and you can even throw Floods of Rage in here if you want to replace one of these other perks. I would keep Lethal. Lethal is pretty pretty sick on Huntress ever since they changed it. And for our add-ons, we're going to be running Infantry Belt and Oak Haft. All right, so now that your fundamental mechanics like chasing and looping are taken care of, we can start learning survivor behavior patterns. The goal of this build is not to win games. In fact, you're going to lose a lot if you're running this build because this build has no gin slowdown. It's to simply observe. You're going to use every single aura reading perk to get an understanding of what survivors do when you're not around, when you're across the map. You can use lethal to observe spawn behaviors. In fact, there's also... Uh, guides you can look up on Google, you can find spawning locations for every map. Depending on where you spawn, you can see where the survivors spawn. Uh, but lethal just helps you, you know, see it in, in practice, see it in game. You can kind of get an idea of where survivors spawn on the map and how to immediately start getting that early game pressure. Then you can use Bitter Murmur to see where they go and what they do when they finish gens. Or Floods of Rage to see what they do when they unhook. This build excels at helping you hit those montage cross-map beauties. And once you get a solid grasp on how survivors behave, you can start slowly replacing pieces of this build to try and add things like in-game perks or gin slowdown so you can start getting some real lethality in your builds. You can start getting some Ws in addition to the sick plays. Ideally, you will not play worse from taking some of these aura reading perks away, you just will no longer need them to hit the cross maps. It can take you a very long time to graduate from using all these perks. In fact, I still use barbecue and lethal in my normal builds just for the convenience. So I'm not saying that you'll never run these perks again after this. I'm just saying if you go into high MMR with three aura reading perks plus Iron Maiden, you're going to get your shit pushed in. And that's it. Congratulations, you've graduated. Now let's cover some homework that uh, I need to assign you for over the summer before you come back in the fall and take the intermediate course all right uh you're gonna have to turn it in like honestly or i'm gonna come to your house and make you drink water all right i told you it was a threat so first things first you're gonna need to drill into your brain how to make your hatchets land at hooks and door gates you will eventually start to get a feeling all right it'll be an instinctive feeling deep in your gut you'll know when a survivor is about to get unhooked and throwing your hatchet across the map back to the hook where the survivor was is almost always going to net you a hit. You can practice this during the game by just throwing hatchets at your survivors that are on hooks. Once you hook a survivor and you walk away to go look for someone else, just turn around and throw a hatchet and see if you can get the angle to hit the survivor on the hook. Uh, you'll be able to tell when you did it because it'll still make the noise as if you hit a survivor. They'll even yell sometimes. Uh... You'll want to do this because you'll notice that you'll notice with Floods of Rage specifically that when survivors unhook, they tend to just heal right there. The survivor will unhook and they'll just start healing at the hook. They won't move. They don't they don't care that you have hatchets that you can throw at them from across the map. So you're going to punish this. You'll either trigger the unhook survivor's deep wound state or you'll get a free hit on the survivor that's healing. This is really good to learn. Another thing you're going to want to do is while you're patrolling uh, the early game, you're patrolling gens trying to find survivors. Take note of where the exit gates are and identify how safe they are. Uh, for example, if an exit gate is behind a main building or a killer shack or it has a really high wall jungle gym, that door is going to be pretty protected uh, because those structures are hard to throw hatchets over, depending on how close the gate is to the building. Uh, and then you're going to have your exit gates that are just right out in the open. Uh, you'll want to you know, maybe even go in a custom game with a friend and just practice hitting the exit gates from anywhere on the map. Uh, hitting a survivor while they're opening the door 
uh, is honestly the difference between a 2K and a 4K in some scenarios. Uh, and next, these are the builds. This is the builds that uh, I feel like half the people that clicked on this video probably came here for. Uh, so let's go over it. First, we have the sweaty build. For this build, we're going to be running full gen slowdown with Iron Maiden because I am addicted. So we're going to be running things like Scourge Hook Pain Resonance, Dead Man Switch, Corrupt Intervention, Deadlock. Uh, you can run any combination of these perks and you're going to have a pretty good time. Uh, it's it's pretty brutal. You'll get some complaints in the post game chat, but you'll win a lot of games. So, you know, take that if you will. And for the add ons for the sweaty build, I'm honestly going to recommend uh, probably Infantry Belt and Ocaft. Those are really your bread and butter. Ocaft makes it really easy to hit your M2 and then immediately follow it up with an M1. A lot of times when you hit a hatchet on a survivor, they'll immediately try and go for a vault because they think they're saved. And with Ocaft, you can hit an M1 on them through the window, and it's an easy, easy down. And Infantry Belt, just because, hey, having seven hatchets is, is pretty sick. Uh, the less you reload, the more you're throwing hatchets, the more you're downing survivors, the less downtime there is. Then let's go over the Montage build. Uh, this build is basically going to be your Phase 2 build. So you're going to be running your aura reading perks. Uh, Floods of Rage... Barbecue, Bitter Murmur, Darkness Revealed, I'm All Ears. Uh, basically just any aura reading perks that can help you hit cross maps. And for these, I like to run. I like to run Oakhaft and uh, Shiny Pin or Infantry Belt. Either one works. Infantry Belt just so you can, you know, you're reloading less. This is the same principle as the last build. Uh, but I like Shiny Pin just because it helps you kind of get around those corners uh, when you're in chase. It's not necessarily to help you get the cross maps. It's just to help you when you're in chase. Uh, shiny pin's kind of underrated in my opinion and then we have the competitive but fun build uh, this one's just going to be a combination of both so you're still going to be running honestly what i like to do is run pain resonance uh, plus floods of rage so that way you know one scourge hook you're still getting slow down and aura reading uh, then combining that with either darkness revealed or barbecue or bitter murmur and then iron maiden so you're still getting a decent amount of aura reading you can still hit cross maps but you have just a tinge of gin slowdown uh, you could honestly replace Floods of Rage with something like Deadlock, maybe. Um, because Floods of Rage is kind of going to be, it's, it's a little feast or famine, okay? It's based on hooks. If you're not getting hooks, you're not getting slowdown. Deadlock, however, is guaranteed slowdown. Uh, you could even run Corrupt Intervention if you're having, a, if you're noticing that you're having a lot of trouble getting your first down in the game. It's taking you a long time to find that first survivor. Uh, then I would really recommend Corrupt Intervention for this build. Uh, and then for the add-ons, uh, once again, really any add-ons work for this one. Uh, you're going to have your own preference. Personally, I love Babushka and Roseroot uh, just because it feels so good in chase when you're running those perks. Uh, but Oakhaft is honestly one of the best add-ons in the game for Huntress. Uh, Infantry Belt is also really good. Shiny Pin's really good. You're, I recommend you really just messing around and finding your own add-ons, um, especially for this build, because this build's kind of going to be your own personal one. You're going to put whatever you want in there. Uh, and then we have the M1 meme build, okay? This one is not so serious, but it's, it is very fun, okay? Uh, hear me out. So you're going to run Iridescent Head and uh, Soldier's Putty, both of the Iridescent add-ons. And then at the very start of the game, you throw your hatchet in the air, and you just M1 for the rest of the game. You're a 4.6 killer with no power. <laughs> I know that sounds bad. Uh, and then you can just run things like Sloppy, uh, Sloppy Butcher, Fire Up, fucking Superior Anatomy, just run things that you generally wouldn't expect to see on a Huntress, and the survivors will be a little confused. It's a... I've honestly... I, don't get me wrong. I've actually won games with this build. It, it can just be pretty fun. Uh, it kind of lets you take your frustration out on some of those loops that you will get really frustrated with on Huntress because you're a 4.6 killer, and all of a sudden you don't really care. You don't care about pallets. You have fire up. You have brutal strength. You can just bust them down. Anyways, I don't want to completely freak out over this build but it's a lot of fun i think people should try out the m1 build every now and then it's really great uh and then for my personal build so what i like to do i like to run babushka and rose root or Oakhaft and shiny pin again kind of your own thing uh and then for my perks i like to run iron maiden darkness revealed deadlock and usually barbecue, maybe sometimes lethal. Um, I like deadlock just for the guaranteed slowdown. And then I like having darkness revealed because I feel like personally, you get a lot of value on it on most maps. Some maps you don't get any value on it. 
uh, just because there aren't that many lockers. Like Haddonfield, for example. Haddonfield is a god-awful map for Darkness Revealed. If you bring Darkness Revealed to Haddonfield, you're basically just running three perks. Uh, Godspeed. But that's it. You've made it through my introduction to Hunter's Guide. Uh, for my next video, for the intermediate lessons, I think I want to go over all the kind of nooks and crannies, things that you can throw your hatchet through that you probably didn't realize you could throw your hatchet through. And then I think I'm also going to go over all the add-ons and explain why Ocaft is the best add-on in the game. And that's it. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Please leave a like and a comment if this video was even remotely helpful to you. Check out my Twitch sometimes. I'm pretty much always playing Hunters over there, and you could ask me some on-the-fly tips and tricks, or even submit some gameplay for review. I don't mind. I like coaching. And uh, I'll catch you later. Peace.